As federal prosecutors rack up compelling evidence and persuasive testimony, the multiple investigations into Donald Trump are coming to a head. NBC News is exclusively reporting that the federal grand jury on the Trump classified documents case is expected to meet this upcoming week. Meanwhile, he's losing the blind support of high-profile Republicans that have come to his defense over the years, as Ron DeSantis, Chris Christie, Mike Pence, and more 2024 hopefuls are distancing themselves from their former party leader. Who better to break down this inflection point for Trump than our next guest? Joining me now is Mary Trump, host of the Mary Trump Show podcast, author of Too Much and Never Enough, How My Family Created the World's Most Dangerous Man, and The Reckoning, Our Nation's Trauma and Finding a Way to Heal, She's also the niece of Donald J. Trump. Mary, my friend, it's always so good to see you. Let's talk about first some politics. The crowded Republican primary field for the presidential nomination is giving a lot of people some 2016 deja vu. But this time around, Donald is in the midst of several very serious legal investigations and cases. He's already been indicted by the Manhattan DA, and NBC News is exclusively reporting that the grand jury in the Mar-a-Lago documents case is set to meet this week. Assuming, Mary, he's indicted, which I think is one of many indictments to come, will Donald take everyone down with him if he thinks his ship is truly sinking? Well, Katie, uh, first of all, it's great to be here. And secondly, yes, I think that was a rhetorical question, but I'm going to answer it anyway. He absolutely will. He could not possibly handle the thought that somebody would take away what he believes is rightly his, which in this case is the Republican presidential nomination for 2024. Um, unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately, the Republican Party doesn't seem to have learned that 2016 lesson. A crowded field benefits Donald. And uh, as we have seen so far, the other candidates for the nomination are doing what I think Josh Marshall at Talking Points Memo referred to as trying to out Donald Donald. And one, that's impossible. And two, it just sort of reminds us that narcissism can make people really stupid. Suffice it to say, and as the title of your last book suggests, America's been traumatized for a number of reasons, but I'd say a lot of it, Mary, stems from the divisive and hateful politics that has become our country. How can we survive the next presidential election cycle and not be re-traumatized, especially by somebody like Donald Trump? Yeah, it's it's going to be difficult. And I, I think it's important to be upfront about that and and understand what we're in for. Uh, you know, it's going to be a long, quite difficult election season. But if we remember, first of all, that there are more of us than there are of them, and if we organize and hang on to that knowledge and also understand that the fight they fight is going to be a dirty one and we need to respond accordingly. And, you know, the second thing is that in the process of this nomination, the Republican Party uh, may well tear itself apart or at the very least weaken itself uh, in a way that will be helpful for democracy. But how should mainstream media handle this 2024 election cycle? So far, we've seen runaway town halls and networks that continue to court election deniers. Katie, it's really shocking. I, you know, I, I haven't had much uh, hope for the mainstream media since probably the Iraq war. <laughs> but, um, you know, 2016 was a uh, nadir of horrible reporting and this notion that both sides uh, deserve equal time, even though one of those sides is constantly lying. And by the way, undermining democracy, it's pretty shocking, even though I guess it isn't surprising anymore. First of all, I've never quite understood why they continue to treat Donald Trump as a normal candidate. I think the very first thing that should be said about him when anybody's reporting on anything he's doing is that he uh, is the perpetrator of the big lie, which was one of the most egregious attempts to undermine the faith of the American people in free and fair elections, and two, that he incited, planned, and led an insurrection against his own government. Those are the first two things anybody should hear about this man who, unbelievably enough, because of our deeply broken system, is being allowed to run for president again. 